Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning. We will call this uh, work session to order. And um, I would like to start off by acknowledging uh, a nice award that our county administrator uh, has achieved uh, this past week. The information came out from ACCG. Um, our own county administrator, Mark Teal, uh, won the Jerry R. Griffin Excellence Award in Public Service. So uh, Mark Till is the recipient of this award, and uh, he is highly respected among the county for his ability to encourage and motivate others. If we could, if we could just give Mark Till a virtual round of applause this morning for this great. Congratulations, Mark. Thanks, Chairman. Oh, thanks, everyone. You're so welcome. Um, I want to remind our citizens today that our, this meeting is under the Open Meeting Act. Uh, however, we will not uh, be taking comments, public comment um, today. But however, I encourage you to email your your uh, district commissioners, Mark Teal or myself, and we will, will respond expeditiously. Uh, we will certainly take this matter or your matter under advisement. Um, next, we have the Board of Commissioners to approval of the minutes. I ask that you take a look at those minutes for tomorrow. Uh, and before I start, I just want to make sure I have all the Board of Commissioners present. And when I call your name, if you could just say present, I would appreciate it. Um, Vice Chairman, um, District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. Um, District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 1 uh, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. Uh, Commissioner Ann jones guider Present. Okay, just wanted to make sure we were all here. I can only see two faces at this time. All right, we'll move forward. I, uh, Board of Commissioners, I, I encourage you to look at the minutes for tomorrow and we will approve accordingly. Next, we have some proclamations we have, which is tab number four. And I'll just, uh, just briefly read each proclamation and what uh, the end proclamation entail, and certainly those proclamations will be read tomorrow. Tab number four is proclaiming Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, as Emergency Medical uh, Services for the Children Day in Douglas County, and that proclamation will be read by our own Chief uh, Scott Spencer. Tab number five is proclaiming the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2020, as EMS Week in Douglas County, and again, uh, Chief Scott Spencer will read that pro proclamation. We have Tab number six, pro uh, proclaiming the month of May 2020 as Older Americans Day in Douglas County. And that uh, proclamation will be read by Rick Martin. And tab number seven, proclaiming the month of May 2020 as Mental Health Awareness Day in Douglas County. And also that proclamation will be read by our own uh, communications director, Rick Martin. Board of Commissioners, we'll move on to tab number eight. We have some grants uh, this morning that will be coming forth. Uh, which is tab number eight. Board of Commissioners, I ask uh, that we um, limit our comments to three minutes, and then certainly you can come back with a two-minute rebuttal, uh, and then we can go forward. Tab number eight is authorization to accept a CARES Act, HHS stimulus payment to Douglas County Fire and EMS Department in the amount of $66,052.55 and amend the budget. Uh, Chief Spencer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm uh, th this is actually based on our uh, 2019 Medicare Medicaid uh, agreement uh, and the amount of money that we collected. Uh, so this is a portion that uh, the federal government, uh, we didn't have to apply for this. They automatically sent it to us. Uh, and so we just wanted to uh, ask the Board of Commissioners to let us accept it. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Chief. Any questions for Chief Spencer, Board of Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. May I ask just one question? Yes, yes Commissioner Guider. Okay. Now, Chief, this has nothing to do with the COVID-19 uh, virus, right? Well, it, it is part of the CARES Act, which does I, that's cover- That's what confused me. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. It, 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 uh, what, what we intend to use this money for is to buy the full face, full face respirators for our personnel uh, and so, some of the other COVID-related uh, expenses that we've already uh, 
spent. Okay, so it can be spent on the virus uh, related uh, expenditures. Is what yes, you're saying. Okay, all right, just wanted to clarify. Thank you. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right, if there are no other comments, we'll move on to tab number nine authorization to accept grant funds in the amount of $6,000. $42.89 from the Georgia Trauma Care Network Commission to purchase trauma care related equipment and amend the fire department's budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related, uh, related documents pending final legal review. Chief Scott Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a grant that we put in for every year from the uh, Georgia Trauma Cares Commission. Uh, this year we're going to be purchasing, uh, if approved, a uh, advanced cardiac life support mannequin so that as we train our people uh, we can do everything from intubation to the 12 lead EKG uh, to all the drug therapy uh, and, and do it on a, a mannequin uh, so so this is uh, sorely needed in our uh, training division okay thank you so much chief any questions from the board all right thank you we'll move on to the next item Tab number 10, authorization to accept grant funds in the amount of $2,429.88 from the Georgia Trauma Care Network Commission Regional Improvement Funds for the purchase of sanitizing equipment and amend the fire department budget. Chief Spencer again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this, this actual item, uh, the, the Georgia Trauma Commission decided that due to the COVID virus that they would allow some of these funds to be spent for uh, sanitizing equipment, uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're buying another electrostatic uh, decontamination unit. Uh, we have one, but this will give us a second one so we can do things twice as fast and uh, in case one of them were to break. Okay, thank you so much, Chief. Any questions from the board? All right, thank you, Chief, so much. Uh, we'll move on to tab number 11, authorization to accept supplemental funds and emergency COVID-19 funds in the amount of $9,443 from the CJCC for the Felony Accountability Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Uh, Tim Pruitt, Mr. Pruitt. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, this is an extension of our current operating grant from the uh, Criminal Justice Coordinating Council and the Council of Accountability Court Judges. There's no new grant number but they did issue an emergency grant application. We were awarded that dollar amount. And so this is just asking for permission to accept. There is no match. We just need to amend the budget. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pruitt. Any questions for? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh-huh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I heard your voice. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pruitt. Yes, sir. All right, I got a question for you. So, we're, we're, is this a one-time amendment to the budget? Is this something that's ongoing? That's my first question. This will be a one-time amendment to the budget. Our grant year will end June at the end of June. The new grant year will kick off July one. Uh, so, there's not a lot of time for any new money under this grant. Uh, we will be approaching the board of commissioners in the next work session to talk about our next grant whenever that award amount is made. But for this grant, this is the only time we'll amend the budget. Okay, got it. All right, and then my last minute, I'm going to ask you my last question, which is what can this money be used for? Just frame it. I'm not looking for specifics, but how, how can this be used? How will you use it, rather? We can use this for personal protective equipment for staff and for participants. We can also use this for our uh, video conferencing. Uh, the accountability courts have been virtual for over the last six weeks, ever since the judicial emergency order was issued. We have been doing treatment groups and individual groups in this very same format. Uh, we use a different piece of software, but the experience is the same. We have not missed a single hour of treatment through COVID. Uh, that is unique across the state. There are many accountability courts that have virtually shut down. Uh, we've continued operations and we are actually continuing to plea new participants into the accountability courts, granted at a lower level than normal, but the courts are operating at a lower level than normal. So I feel very good about what we've been able to do. But your question was about what can we spend it on? We can spend it on COVID-19 related expenses. 
and that includes testing for our staff and for our participants. That includes personal protective gear. That includes the technology that we've used to uh, push our staff into virtual uh, settings, office settings, and to hold groups and individuals virtually. Okay, so and, and then when you said technology, um, you said you use a different application, so you're not using Zoom or um, 365. What are you using? What else is out there? What, Web, WebEx or something? What are you using? We are using Cisco's WebEx platform. That's correct. I got it. Okay, that's my time. Madam Chair, I'll yield the floor back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pruitt. All right, we're going to move on to tab number 12, authorization to accept the second year congestion mitigation and air quality CMAC grant for operation of Connect Douglas fixed route bus service and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Watson. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, we're wrapping up our first year of the, the CMAC grant and the second year will carry us through May of this year through May of uh, 2021. Uh, this gives us $1.6 million in additional federal money, uh, which will require a, a $400,000 uh, local match. And this money is already in, part of this money is already in the budget for, for 2020 uh, because of the, the way the uh, grant year is, is running now. Uh, so it, uh, really doesn't require any additional funds uh, from the county. And of course, the purpose of this is to help us operate the uh, fixed route flex and paratransit service. Okay, thank you so much, Director Watson. Any question from the board to comment? Vice Chairman Robinson. Yes, thank you. Uh, um, Director Watson, quick question for you. So um, obviously we're operating um, under this current um, COVID um, environment, and what what impact does that have on our operating? Um, um, is does the FTA weighed in on stop losses, or I mean, talk to me about that. I know something came up in the transportation committee. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Are we getting any any support uh, regarding our public transportation? Oh yes, sir. Uh, we're working on an application uh, for the CARES grant project, and that's that particular pro uh, program is related uh, to the COVID-19. Uh, we're going to be able to receive some funds from FTA to mitigate uh, revenue losses, uh, to, to help us cover additional cleaning expenses, uh, things like that. That will be 100% uh, federal money. And we'll be submitting that application within the next next two weeks. Um, we, uh, we've been allocated $2.5 million in CARES funds uh, for this. And what we're trying to do now is, is determine exactly how much that, of that we're gonna be able to, uh, to utilize. Uh, in fact, just before this commission work session, um, I had a conversation with our FTA representatives uh, with Region 4 in Atlanta and it looks like they're going to allow us uh, to use some of this CARES money uh, in our uh, 21 through 22 uh, bus cycle uh, to help us pay 100% of the operating costs for that particular 12 month period. Uh, so uh, the FTA is, is definitely trying to take care of, of not only our transit agencies, but also all other transit agencies in the, uh, the country. Well, well done. That, that's all I need to hear. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much. All right, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, tab number 13 is yours as well. Uh, um, authorization to accept the 2020 through 2021 Atlanta Regional Commission grant for the transportation voucher program for seniors and individuals with disabilities and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. We've been receiving funds from the Atlanta Com Regional Commission for this program since 2013. And our allocation in federal money uh, for the fiscal year beginning July the 1st is $108,000. Uh, that will require a $72,000 uh, local match. Again, a portion of this money is already included in the, the 2020 county budget. So we're not asking for any additional funds. 
And with this money, we'll be able to increase uh, our senior and disabled clients from 125 to 140. Okay. All right, any questions from the board? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Direct Director Watson. We're going to move on, Board of Commissioners, to tab number 14, which, which is authorization to accept the donation of 40 Chromebooks from Google to support COVID-19 efforts. Director Martin, Russ Martin. Oh, yes, ma'am. So um, in our effort to create as, as large an environment of work from home employees as possible, uh, we've had a little bit of trouble getting enough laptops in. So this donation will allow us to add another 40 employees at department head requests to our group of work from home employees. And so we'd like to accept them. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much, um, Director Martin. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll go to County Administrative Business. Tab number 15 is authorization for Greystone Power to install street lights at various locations as shown on, shown on the attachment at a cost of $250,925.20 to be paid from the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And I'm going to read number 16 as well, County Administrator. Authorization for Georgia Power to install street lights at various locations as shown on the attachment at a cost of $16,067.56 to be paid from the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorize the chairman to sign all of the documents. County Administrator Mark Teal, if you could elaborate. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, and I'll see if I can pull this up on the screen. Well, it just appears on me. Um, hold on one second. Okay. There we go. Can you see that? We see you. You're I see it. Okay. Now we see it. Yes. Okay. So the board previously approved phase one, which is I-20, Liberty Road, Post Road, Highway 5, Chapel Hill, Fairburn Road, Lee Road, and Thornton Road. Um, so what's on the agenda today, as recommended by the Transportation Committee, is the remainder of this list. Uh, the first section here that you see on the screen are segments of, of uh, roads. And the only difference from the last submittal, we added uh, post road from Polk Road to mm -hmm. Brook Hollow Drive as requested by Commissioner Robinson and for the, for the public. So all of these were recommended by all four commissioners and the chairman, uh, the entire list. So, and the other difference was Highway 166. So that includes the intersections of Tyree, Post Road, Caps Ferry, Big A Road, West Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill and Highway 5, and the segment, the entire segment from the new roundabout at 166 and 92 to Chapel Hill Road. It also includes all the intersections listed below um, and there's about 30, 35 intersections, actually 42. Um, so the entire cost of phase two for uh, Georgia Power, $16,067.56. Um, Greystone would be $250,925.20. dollars for a total of Three hundred sixty-two thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars and actually three thirty-seven five fifty-two. So the total cost when you add the I twenty intersections is three hundred right at three hundred sixty-three thousand dollars, and we had five hundred thousand dollars allocated in the SPLOS, so we are under budget. Okay, thank you, County Administrator. Any questions for our County Administrator, Madam Chair? Yes. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, no, thank you. And real quick, Madam Chair, if it, if it pleases you, um, obviously we've got a, a much larger audience than we normally would and as far as offline meetings. Uh, I know the list is somewhat long, but every now and then citizens need to hear uh, what's in it for them. So 
I mean, while we've got time, do you mind allowing the county administrator to read the list so that people can hear that, okay, I got something out of my government versus having to make them go look up the list? Uh, oh. That's all I ask. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, county administrator, would you please read the name of the streets that have been chosen um, by the district commissioners and intersections for their uh, various districts? And then also, the, of course, you know the, uh, the Interstate 20 uh, ramps mine so what's my suggestion so if you could go forth and just read to our citizens to so they can hear about the excitement of some lights in these very dangerous dark places in douglas county okay well the ones that are in progress right now we're obtaining uh uh middle of obtaining permits from georgia dot so it's i-20 at liberty road post road highway 5 chapel hill um lee road and thornton road uh, the city of Douglasville is uh, working on the lights at Fairburn Road in I-20. So the road segments are Highway 166, as stated before, uh, Bright Star Road from Highway 78 to Highway 5, West Stewart Mill from Yancey Road and Stewart's Mill Road to Highway 5, uh, Simon Road, Dorset Shoals Road, um, that would be on the 82 existing poles. Corsi Lake Road, Tackett Road, South Sweetwater Road from I-20 to Highway 78. Uh, and there's some existing lights there, but this would be an extension of, extension of that. They're sort of sparsely located. Uh, Mount Vernon Road from South Sweetwater Road to Sweetwater Terrace, Skyview Drive from Mount Vernon Road to South Sweetwater Road, uh, Warren Road from Polk Road to Brook Hollow Drive, Post Road from the Post Road Rideshare to Highway 78, and that includes the intersection of Post Road and Highway 78. Um, so if you go to the intersection, so it's Highway 78, South Burnt Hickory, North Burnt Hickory, Annie Wakey Road and Pope Road, Slater Mill Road and Pope Road, Presley Mill and Slater Mill Road, uh, the stop sign on uh, Slater Mill Road, Timber Ridge Drive and Presley Mill, um, Highway 5 and Berea, Bright Star Road Connector, well, Bright Star Road and the Connector, uh, Highway 5 and Bright Star Road, Stewart's Mill Road and Central Church, Liberty Road and Cole Road, Cowan Mill Road and Mason Creek, Post Road and Daniel Mill, Doris Road and Cedar Mountain Road, Ephesus Church Road and Cole Road, Ephesus Church Road and Liberty Road, Post Road and Ephesus Church, Highway 5 South Giles Road, Highway 61 and High Point Road, Highway 166 and Post Road, Highway 5 and Kings Highway, Bright Star Road and John West, Highway 78 and John West, Highway 78 and the Liberty Road Loop, that would be the Highway 78 end, the other end, which is Mirror Lake Road and Liberty Loop Road, uh, handled by the city of Little Wicca. Uh, Post Road and Pool Road, Pool Road and Johnston Road, Post Road and Banks Mill Road, Highway 78 and Post Road, well, that was included earlier. And then Highway 5 and Tyree Road, Highway 78 and Tyson Road, West Stewart's Mill Road and Woodland Drive, and West Stewart's Mill Road and Creekwood Drive. And that's the list. Okay. Thank you so much, County Administrator. All right, Board of Commissioners, any questions or comments? I think this is very... I do. I have a question, Chairman Jones, to uh -huh. Mark. In regards to the um, ongoing cost, the monthly fee, will this increase our cost, Mark? And if so, by how much? 
Yeah, so the total, including the lights on I-20, will increase our monthly cost by $2,106 for Georgia Power, $3,982 for uh, Greystone. And that could can be absorbed in our existing uh, streetlight fund, the, the, the money we receive from streetlights in the county. Okay, so... Yeah, or no budget impact. impact. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. No budget impact. Thank you so much. I yelled Chairman Jones. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Carson. Madam, Madam uh, Chair. Uh-huh, Commissioner Geiger. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Mark, I think you left off the one at Banks Mill, Poop Mill, Highway 5, but that's going to, we are going to have lights there when uh, the roundabout is finished in a couple of years. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Okay. I think you skipped it. I, <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's not included in this round because because they're waiting on that intersection to be finished. Okay. All right. I just want the people out there to know that it is coming. Some lighting will come with the roundabout. All right. Thank you. I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right. Thank you, County Administrator. We're going to move on to our business items next, Board of Commissioners, which is tab number 17, authorization to revise the previously approved TEFRA for Brighton Academy and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Attorney Fowler, how are you doing this morning, Joe Fowler? Fine. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for putting this on the agenda. Brighton Academy relocated several years ago from their location on Brookmont Parkway they relocated, as you know, to their new location on Presley Mill Road near First Baptist Church. At the time of the relocation, November the 25th, 2013, the school obtained bond financing for the expansion in the total amount of $10,700,000. Part of that financing was to refinance the existing debt on their former location on Brookmont Parkway. That location at that time was offered for lease, but no interest was shown, and that was noted in the bond documents. But since that time, a nonprofit school known as Angels in Progress, a small nonprofit Christian school, has agreed to enter into a lease with Brighton Academy. They have agreed and they've signed a lease. The bond lawyer for Brighton has indicated that since there now is a lease, public notion public notice of that fact must be given and a TEFRA hearing conducted. A TEFRA hearing is simply a process that is mandated by the IRS to provide a reasonable opportunity for people to express their views orally or in writing on the issuance of, in this case, the amendment to the bonds and the nature of the project that's being undertaken. Public notice was published in the Douglas County Sentinel on, on April the 12th. I'm sorry, that's April the 23rd of 2020. And a hearing was conducted Friday morning. No participants came. Nothing in writing has been produced. And so at this point, the request is for the county to approve the modification to the original TEFRA that was done in 2013. There is no impact on the county budget whatsoever. There was not now and never would have been any obligation for any public body with respect to those bonds. This is really a housekeeping matter to reflect that the property on Brookmont Parkway is now under lease. That's it, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Attorney Fowler. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Vice Chairman Robson. No, I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, uh, Joe, this 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 facility, um, the older facility, uh, um, it, it's within the Brookmont um, community. So, yep. how many square feet is this building, roughly? At one time, I knew fifteen thousand right. square feet, maybe. All right, that's that's good enough. Relative, I, I, I get that. So. Um, I understand TEFRA, so I won't get technical um, regarding municipal bonds. Um, so now we've allowed um, Brighton Academy um, to move over to a new location. Uh, it was conditional based upon um, having um, a, a leasee uh, inside the old facility. My, my question is, and we, now we've got a new startup that we're allowing to, to participate, which I encourage, no problem. Um, 
that's what happens is that when assets uh, become available, the younger can move up and we just like houses, we all move up, no problem. Is there, so what it, it, does it matter about the strength of the new person coming on board? What happens if this doesn't go forward um, as planned? We've let Brighton Academy out, which I'm fine with, but I'm more concerned about um, the impact of this within um, obviously District 2 and in that community where, talk to me. I think you know where I'm trying to go and I'm just trying to get a feel for what, what, what I get what happens if all goes well. What if they're not able to succeed? Is there a period of time in which um, all things are equal? Is it one year, two year, three years? I'm just trying to get a feel when it's it's matured. Can you talk to me? They're entering to a lease, I understand, to be year by year to see how the school goes. Yeah. Sometimes there are startups that are successful and sometimes they are not. Right. Okay. You've answered my question. I don't have to belabor this. I'll, 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 I can talk offline and I'll yield to the floor to my, my peers of Diesel. Madam Chair, I'm good. Thank you, ma'am. Nikki. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Madam Chair. Okay. Attorney. We okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Commissioner Carthen, are you? I, I was I was I, going to ask a question while you were frozen, uh, but I, I can do it. Time. Thank you. That's Go. okay. I can do it. I can do it offline. I'll just call you Attorney Fowler. Thank yes. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry about it. I don't know what's going on with my system. System. I feel like frozen this morning. All right. Um, we're going to move on to the next. I thank you so much, Attorney Fowler. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And I'll drop off at this point. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. all right. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to tab number 18, authorization to remove to renew the inmate housing agreement with Douglasville Police Department and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Major Bobby Holmes this morning. Good morning, Madam Chair. This is Major Wilson in place for Bobby Holmes this morning. Uh, we're asking for the uh, board to uh, review and approve the inmate housing agreement with the Douglasville Police Department. Uh, this is essentially the same agreement that we had in 2017 with one exception. We've uh, increased the uh, routine non-emergency non uh, rate for medical care, uh, which is uh, to reflect what the consumer price index has uh, done in the last several years. Um, and um, outside of that, it's essentially the same agreement. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? All right. Thank you so much, Major Whitson. You're welcome. Madam, Madam you. Chairman. Yeah. Madam uh, Chairman. Okay. I, 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 I apologize. My, my camera went out on when Joe was talking on 17. I do, do want the board to know I don't didn't hear what Joe said. That TEFRA hearing, there's no responsibility in the county. It's the ministerial act of approving his TEFRA hearing, so we have no exposure on the bonds. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Bernard. And thank you thank so you. much, Major, Major Wilson. Ma'am. Uh-huh. Commissioner. I don't care. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I hear uh, you. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know your rank, but anyway, uh, hey, uh, Joanne, could you uh, explain a again what you just said about non-emergency, whatever? Yes, ma'am. The, uh, the city, they pay us a flat fee for uh, the housing of the inmates. And in 2017, uh, we decided to move away from our third party medical provider doing an itemized bill for any medical treatment that the inmates got uh, to doing a, uh, uh, a little additional to the flat fee. So uh, this is only for routine non-emergency care. So this is what we would pay our medical provider to do uh, an intake assessment, a TB test, just the routine stuff. Uh, we, we took um, what we were spending and we averaged that out for the number of inmates that uh, we were housing for the city and we uh, add that in addition to it um, over the last few years uh, based on the increase in medical uh, medical care cost uh, we're inflating that fee to uh, accommodate for the increased cost. Uh, so every couple of years that'll go up a few percent and uh, based on what we've seen, uh, it's 2% the first year. 
uh, and then it'll go up another 2% in 2021 to uh, absorb that cost increase. Okay, uh, is there any concession for the COVID-19 testing uh, when an inmate comes in from the city? Uh, because um, I don't know if you have to pay for those tests, but um, there's so many outbreaks in jails right now, so we have to be very, very careful. And I just wanted to know if the county was is covered as far as any uh, contamination from COVID-19. Anything related to COVID-19 would be outside of the routine non-emergency care and would not fall under that part of it. So the city would have to pick up uh, that bill. But do you test yes, an inmate when they come in for this virus? Uh, we're not doing the actual COVID uh, screening as far as the nasal swab. What we're doing is we're uh, monitoring for symptoms uh, as far as temperature, whether or not they're coughing, whether or not they're displaying any other symptoms of having COVID. Uh, then they move into a 14-day quarantine uh, before they're ever put in with our general population inmates. Okay. Have you had any kind of um, outbreak in, in the jail here? No, ma'am. Knock on wood, we have not. All right. Bless your heart. <laughs> thank you. I yes, yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right. Thank you so much, Major Wilson Hunt. Thank Thanks, you. ma'am. Um, you're welcome. We're going to move on to tab number 19, an authorization to approve integrated construction change order for the Deer Lick Park Tennis Courts construction project in the amount not to exceed $88,733.74 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST fund as funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Gary Dukes. Director. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, yes, this is uh, a change order due to rock. Uh, they've encountered rocks at the uh, construction site as we thought they may. Uh, they have rock under two of the courts. Uh, they also think that uh, they might be able to, might have to do some boring for the lights on the tennis courts. Uh, due to the fact that they have to be six feet deep. The foundation has to be six feet deep for the lights. And uh, there may be some trench work, rock in the trenches for the uh, electrical lines. So uh, this came to us from Terry Gable and Integrated. Uh, there was a uh, alternate in the budget of $88,733 for rock but that was not in the base bid. So that's where they get the figure and um, recommended by the Recreation Oversight Committee to proceed. Okay. Any questions for the board? Commissioner Guider, I see you. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I know the uh, rock issue that has uh, you've run into out at Deer Lake is at a cost of 37,000. So why are we transferring the 88,000? We're just redoing their contract up to 88,000? Yes, ma'am, rather than uh, coming back each time, uh, because again, uh, they're probably gonna have to drill uh, and that will be a cost for the light poles. And then, like I said, the utility trench, uh, we hope that it will not get to that amount. Uh, but uh, rather than come back each time, we just went ahead and put the full amount in the request. So uh, you're really setting up a contingency of 57 or whatever the difference is between the 88 and the 37, is that yes, right? Ma yes, okay. ma'am. But it's to be used only if they run into other problems. That's correct. All right. I, I yield back, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other questions, board, before I move on to the next? Yeah, Madam Chair. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I hear yeah. you. <clears throat> yeah, I, again, I just, I don't want to, I know we've not really talked about the SPLOS over the past um, six weeks um, at length, but um, as we began to sort of migrate back into the new normalcy, um, I appreciate staff effort to keep things on task. I appreciate the committees. Um, and specifically for, for that Deer Lake. Um, it was one of the oldest parks here and one of the, as we want to call it, 
uh, the, the most visited. Uh, we, we recognize, um, obviously, the rock issues out there regarding the animal shelter and how we had to work through that. Uh, but I want to acknowledge that this is what the citizens asked for. Um, you know, every now and then I know we, we apply and we appropriate funds for county offices and county this. But every now and then citizens like, but what about me? Right? It's great to have um, space for our employees and taking care of them. But citizens fund both. Right? So I appreciate the lights throughout the county because that reflects what the citizens wanted. Like we, we, we like it slow out here, Commissioner Robinson, but can we can we get some street lights? Can, can, can we get some sidewalks? And so I, I appreciate, Madam Chair, it, it should go um, acknowledge uh, this loss that we received in 2016 was the first reflection, probably in about 20 years, where the citizens can actually see their tax dollars at work. And um, th these lights throughout the whole county was a, a nice um, distribution. Um, obviously, you know, District 4, I, I give them credit. Um, obviously, it's probably the most rural area, but um, a lot of the uh, money was concentrated out there, but it was it was appropriate. And um, obviously, um, in Deer Lake, I appreciate um, Commissioner uh, Mitchell uh, as being chairman there to making sure that that Deer Lake Park uh, um, continues to be um, the gem of the county that it was supposed to be and that it didn't fall down. So, Madam Chair, again, I know we're waking back up to what we're doing here in the county, but but all these these little projects, and I know we're, we're in the details and the weeds about this, that, and other, but I think it matters to the citizens because while they're seeing us at work, they just want the end result of it. Which is, can I, when, when can I play on my tennis court? Um, when can I access the senior center? When, when, when can we experience the lights when it's raining and, and, and having safety when my, my teenagers travel down 166 past Tuscany Hills out to West Chapel Hill? So I just wanted to acknowledge that. I, I think I've run my two minutes. But Madam Chair, again, this BLOSS is, um, is special because, again, for the first time, again, in a long time, it truly reflects um, the, the interests of the citizens. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. All right, we're going to move on to tab number 20. And before we go to tab number 20, uh, Director Dukes, could you just give a quick update about the roof at Deer Lake Park on the gymnasium? I know that was something that the, the roof was leaking. The Board of Commissioners approved this uh, roof to be replaced. Can you give us an update? Uh, Madam Chair, I haven't heard any word uh, on, on the roof as far as... Uh, any contract or anything from, uh, we were getting uh, some estimates before the coronavirus uh, came along, and but I have not received anything from uh, buildings uh, about the estimates. Okay, so we're still working on it in essence? Yes, ma'am, I think they're still working on it. There's just some delay due to the situation we're in. Okay, as long as we know it's still in the oven. Thank yes, you so much. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're going to move on to tab number 20, authorization to approve Greystone Power uh, Corporation's right-of-way easement needed to provide power for construction of the Deer Lick Tennis Courts as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. We're just giving them uh, right-of-way so that they can supply power to the new tennis complex. Okay. Board of Commissioners, any questions? Okay, thank you so much. Yes, Director. We're going to move on to tab 21, authorization to renew a contract with Transitions Commute Solutions to operate Connect Douglas Fixed Route Flex and, and Paratransit Bus Service and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Gary Watson. Yes, ma'am. We're nearing the end of our first year contract with Transitions, and today we're asking the, the, the board to uh, authorize a second year contract with transitions, we're satisfied with the job that they've done for us uh, in our negotiations with them for a second year. Uh, we've asked them to do some, some things um, for us that will improve the service. One of those being a change in their local leadership. Uh, they brought on a new manager, general manager and assistant general manager uh, these two new people have much more transit experience than the previous local management did, and we believe this is going to uh, greatly improve the efficiency of our service. Uh, but at this time, we are uh, asking to move forward with a second year contract with transitions. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, 
Thank you. We're going to move on to the next item 22 authorization to approve two change orders totaling $3,474.38 related to construction of the addition to the Douglas County Transportation Center and authorize the chairman to uh, sign all related documents. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. When the fire marshal made their final inspection of the new, the new facility, they asked, asked us to do some additional uh, work, uh, like installing a pool station in the kitchen area, installing two exterior egress lights and one exit light, and installing two duct smoke detectors. Uh, so we, this is work that we had to do. Uh, the two change orders total the 3,474.38. Uh, we have money in our budget to cover this. We're not asking for any additional money, and this is 80% reimbursable from the Federal Transit Administration. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right. Thank you. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to move on to tab number 23, authorization to award a bid for John West and Bright Star Road intersection improvements project projects to Accelerer. Uh, construction LLC in the amount of $381,157.30 to be funded through 2016 uh, SPLOS funds as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. All right, Director Valentin, are you here? Yes, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioners. Uh, this intersection uh, improvement, it's been a long time in the works. Uh, we had a total of 10 bids uh, received on this project, which is uh, pretty healthy. And uh, they ranged um, from the low bid at 381,157 and 30 cents to close to a little over $900,000. So the bids were all over the place, but um, this particular bid um, is within budget. And we have contacted uh, the references for this particular uh, contractor. Uh, they've given us very good references on them. Uh, they do work uh, with GDOT and other counties and municipalities in the area. So they are a viable contractor and uh, uh, actually having received um, a very competitive bid, even though personally I have not worked with them before, uh, members of the DOT staff have, and uh, they have good things to say about. Okay. Thank you so much, Director. Uh, any questions uh, for Director Ballantine? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Commissioner Guider. Yes, Miguel. Um, estimated time of uh, work uh, on this because uh, of the school year starting probably in August uh, or whenever. So do you know when they'll be finished with this? The, the contract time is 270 days, so they will be, uh, they will be in, into construction, uh, say, by uh, early uh, June, late May, early June. Uh, they will be into construction throughout the rest of the year. So uh, this, this is going to have desail lane, acceleration lane or whatever, and a turn lane, right? It's, it's going to have... Uh, turn lanes for um, for John West as you approach uh, Bright Star Road. Uh, it's a single lane now. It's going to provide the ability for stacking to make a left turn northbound, which presents a problem okay. now for the neighborhood. So it will have that. It will also have the ability to, to turn left uh, from northbound Bright Star onto John West. Uh, there's not going to be a traffic signal uh, there at this time because the volume doesn't warrant it, uh, but it, it does add turn lanes uh, to, to help with that uh, traffic flow at that intersection. But they will be working on this during the school year is what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. We were hoping it, it could be done in the summer, but that's okay, uh, it, whatever it is. But thank you. I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right, uh, Board of Commissioners, I'm going to move on to tab 24. Tab 24 is authorization to file applications with GDOT for traffic signal permits at the intersections of State Route 92 and Mount Vernon Road and State Route 92 and Riverside Parkway and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director uh, Valentin, we're really excited to hear about these two intersections. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The, the, the signal at Mount Vernon and State Route 92 is actually functional now. We're kind of catching up with the permit application. Uh, it is uh, a GDOT uh, road, but uh, uh, because we are going to, it is in our county and we're going to be monitoring the uh, operation of the signal, uh, we have to get a permit from them. We're also at the same time applying for a permit uh, for Riverside in anticipation of uh, potentially having a traffic signal installed there as well. Uh, we're working with GDOT, having discussions with them uh, to see if we can get that work done uh, similarly to Mount Vernon as a as a GDOT quick response project. Um, uh, they're considering that, but fail that we have uh, the county has contracted with a design consultant to develop a design for that intersection that we would then submit to GDOT for approval. Uh, that work is um, being paused right now while we have discussions with GDOT, but uh, it, either way, whether GDOT does the work or whether the county uh, contracts for the work, uh, we have to have a signal permit. So while they're reviewing the Mount Vernon and, and State Route 92, we'll submit the other one as well. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Or <clears throat> Madam Chair? Uh-huh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, absolutely, Madam Chair. I must concur um, how important these two intersections were. I passed through there um, this past Saturday, obviously the Mount Vernon one, to see that working. Riverside is just as important from an operational safety perspective. Um, as you know, Madam Chair, this came to our attention back in January. Mm -hmm. um, citizens on a tributary um, had, had expressed, um, and they've sent plenty of emails saying how important this was um, as far as you know that turning lane, trying to make a left turn onto obviously Fairburn Road, which obviously it's a hill, it's, the, it's a valley, and, and coming from both lights, both from the north and the south, um, a lot of traffic, a lot of speed, and so it's very dangerous. So again, operational safety, I think it's something that was, again, we were responsive. So again, the county is investing in its infrastructure, these lights, these sidewalks, these stoplights, these are all important, but they all can be tied back to a citizen. A citizen who was listened to, who was responded to, uh, whether it's an aggregate view or just singularly. So again, one more time, this this wasn't us as elected officials dictating what should be done. It's in response to what citizens thought that was, should be important to them. And we had to represent their interests. So Madam Chair, again, I want to thank obviously your staff. Miguel, appreciate you. I, I know you've been working very hard to make this happen behind the scenes. But also we want to make sure we acknowledge that it was the citizens who came up with these ideas and what was important to them as a priority. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. All right, if there are no other discussions for tab number 24, we'll move on to tab number 25. There's no more, um, more discussion. Tab number 25 is authorization to file an application with GDOT for off-system safety funding for striping various county roads in fiscal year uh, 2023 and enter into a memorandum of understanding with GDOT for the project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin again. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This this application is very similar to one that we filed uh, for the fiscal year 2020 that is actually about to break ground. Uh, th this particular application uh, is for work that is done by GDOT. It, it is not, um, the county doesn't contract for the work. It is actually uh, done by them. Uh, we submitted a, a, a list of roads uh, to them. They reviewed the roads and selected the ones that, uh, that they approve of. And so we are anticipating uh, having 20 roads, uh, about 10 miles worth of roads being considered by, uh, by GDOT, again, for a project that they would manage uh, with no match uh, uh, from the county. Okay, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Okay, thank you. Pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much, Director Valentin. We have uh, Board of Commissioners, tab number 26 is our last but not least uh, tab this morning. Uh, authorization to approve an extension of a franchise agreement with Austell Gas System and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Legal Department. Uh, Attorney Bernard. Uh, Madam, yeah, Madam Chair, I hope all everybody's doing well today. 
this is the PSC awarded the city of Austell a franchise in the, a long time ago, I'm going to say in the 50s, to provide natural gas service to the city of Austell and a very small sliver of Douglas County in which Austell sits. All st- the agreement is coming up for renewal. What you have before you essentially mirrors what deal is in place with Cobb County, Powder Springs, and some surrounding areas in which all stale deals. It provides us three, a 3%, uh, 3% franchise fees on revenues generated on the Douglas County side by all stale natural gas. Uh, at, one, uh, at one time, and I'm sorry I don't have it in front of me, I think they had paid about three hundred something thousand dollars over the period of time in which over the last nine years. So it's three hundred six thousand two hundred two twenty eight represents the last nine years of service. Two things that we and, and the agreement is fine. I will tell you that the PSC controls territorial rights for these city gas companies, and so they have an exclusive. There is not anything we can do to change their territory rights. So if we don't go through the ministerial act of approving them, those citizens would be shut down from natural gas in that one small area of Douglas County that borders all stale. And so I've worked with their uh, council, Scott Kimbrough over in Marietta. Uh, the agreement is essentially identical in length as Cobb County. It's uh, the terms are similar to Cobb County's and the actual franchise fee is similar. Now, I will tell you, it does not deal with revenues that the Austell natural gas generates for Austell. It's simply the franchise right or fee to be in that location. We, they have agreed also to add to this. We're working a couple little sentences, but they've agreed to a sentence. Let me pull this up, if you don't mind, uh, that essentially says, should the city of Austell Georgia, the Austell gas system or related entity entity enter into an agreement or understanding with another county or city, which provides for a percentage of payment for a franchise fee greater than 3% as provided herein, then said payment described herein shall immediately be modified to said greater percentage. One of the things I told the city attorney, the agreement is so old, while the custom is 3%, I don't want to be in a position where we bind Douglas County to one number and find out Cobb County renegotiates and gets 4% or 5%. So ours will automatically increase if they change their numbers with any people they're doing business with. And right now, I think it's really only Powder Springs and Cobb County for this particular uh, Austell natural gas besides us. We are talking about adding a sentence that makes sure that this franchise agreement is only related to the service of natural gas and not any other requirements of cities under Georgia law, uh, including providing essential services and also making sure it exempts out SDS. That language has not completely been worked out, but I'm comfortable with y'all going forward subject to final legal approval. The only thing we're trying to do is dress up an ancient agreement so that it meets modern times, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so much. Any questions for Attorney Bernard, Board of Commissioners? All right, thank you. I have a question, Madam Chair, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, Jennifer. Yes, Yes. Uh, just a quick question for Ken. Um, When you talk about the 3% and you say it's an uh, old or a refresher of an old agreement, um, we're still going to be getting the same amount of money as we were in the old agreement, correct? Yeah, the the current... Uh, in my own, yeah, the current agreement doesn't expire until June, I believe, or July. Uh, let's see, I got the actual date in front of me. It expires on July 31st. So essentially, uh, this is a continuation of the 3% of gross revenues from any and all residential and non interruptible commercial accounts of the system located in Douglas County, which is exactly how it read, read before. So it should not be an interruption of 3% at all. Okay, good. All I wanted, uh, Jennifer, was to be able to provide, if they go up on anybody else where they give them a greater fee, we got the benefit of that going up. Good. Okay. Because, yeah, um, we get around three to $350,000 a, a year um, for this, which goes in the uninc fund. So I just want to make sure we, we're not going to be losing any of that. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm sorry. When I spoke about the 306, the 306, 306,202.28 was the average over the last year. nine years. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I may have not used the word average. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Director Holman. And thank you, Attorney Bernard. All right. Um, Board of Commissioners, do we have any comments before I call for an executive session? All right. Uh, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, Madam Chair. We'll need it for real estate personnel and litigation. And I will need probably in this order, Miguel and then Fred, and then I'll, I'll do litigation last. I don't know how we're, are we getting another call like before? Or how are we doing that? Yes. A county administrator. We, you will get another call. County administrator. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We will call back, right, for the... Yes, yeah, so everybody needs to stay on Microsoft Teams. And uh, Fred Perry and Miguel Valentin, if you would, just stand by. Just keep your teams open, and we'll call everybody back at one, or one at a time. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll turn, okay. So we'll need a motion for all three. Oh, I, I, okay, I'm getting ready to call one now. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by saying I and with your name. Uh, I, Ramona Jackson Jones. I, Terenia Carson. I, Kelly Robinson. I, Ann Jones Guider. I, Henry Mitchell. Okay. All right. We have um, we have a unanimous vote, um, and the motion carries a 5 0 vote. All right. Uh, we will. You want us to just hang up and you'll call us back, Mark or Commissioner Mitchell. Just hang up. Yes, ma'am. Everybody will hang up and then we will uh, call you back one at a time. Okay. Thank you. I don't know. Sherry? Hmm. Yes, sir. This is crazy. You're on the camera, Madam Chair. Oh, you see me? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Board of Commissioners. We are back um, in session. Uh, any comments or anything before we um, end our work session today? And I appreciate everybody's um, diligence and participation in this uh, work session. It was very productive. Any comments from the Board of Commissioners? I think it was a great work session, Madam Chair. I'd just like to take a, a point of privilege and, well, and say happy birthday to our own Tiffany Stewart Stanley, although we're all not together. Uh, and these are some um, unprecedented times. I still want to say happy birthday and thank you for all she does uh, for uh, for us at the Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. I texted her this morning at 8 o'clock. I said I imagine she was still getting her beauty rest uh, because of her birthday. But anyway, again, thank you for acknowledging her birthday. And I sent her uh, a message early this morning. And Board of Commissioners, we thank you for celebrating Tiffany Stewart Stanley's birthday. And again, we acknowledge our, our own uh, County Administrator, Mark Till, for his amazing award, Jerry Griffin Award. That's huge. Right. So thank you. Did, who, uh, Mark, who, who nominated you? Hopefully it was one of the staff members, but who nominated you for the award? Uh, it's my understanding it was the chairman. It was the chair. Okay. <laughs> you acknowledge what you did. All right. Well, congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Yes. Look, I couldn't do it without all of you. I mean, I, I was just, I was floored. Um, <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> all right. Before we end, I would certainly like to acknowledge the citizens of Douglas County and just uh, give a quick update and report. As of 7 p.m. yesterday, uh, we had three, 341 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 11 deaths. And uh, my condolences and heartfelt sympathy goes out to our families. Uh, uh, we are citizens of Douglas County. We are very sensitive to this time, and the Board of Commissioners are working uh, diligently to provide uh, up-to-the-minute updates regarding any changes or any improvements or anything that need, that's related to COVID-19 uh, in Douglas County. We've rep ramped up our testing. 
Uh, we have a testing site at Hunter Park. We have contact, we're looking at some things as we go further along, um, uh, which would be contact tracing, therapeutic treatment that's out there now, uh, but certainly has not hit the, the, the uh, runway yet, but just wanted to let you know that those things would hopefully be coming down the pike as we certainly uh, work uh, diligently toward a vaccine uh, as time progress. Uh, certainly, uh, I hope and pray that everyone is doing well uh, and staying safe this time. And again, uh, just, uh, just remember this is a marathon and not a sprint. And the Douglas County Board of Commissioners are committed to your safety. Uh, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, if, if there's nothing else, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.